Welcome to this video. And in this video, we look at the pulse transfer function. For any given discrete control system, the pulse transfer function relates to the ratio of the Z transform of the output to the Z transform of the input. And therefore, the transfer function G of Z relates to the Z transform of the output over the Z transform of the input. This is Y of Z. In any given in any given block diagram representation of a discrete control system, we can have different scenarios depending on the positioning of the sampler in the given block diagram model of the system. The position of the sampler would inform the nature of the transfer function. We'll proceed to discuss this in the context of open loop pulse transfer function and closed loop pulse transfer function, taking into consideration the position of the sampler in the block diagram representation of the system. For the open loop pulse transfer function, we can have blocks in cascade. And when you have blocks in cascade, we can have a sampler between the blocks and at times no sampler between the blocks. If there is no sampler between the blocks, that means we can have a system represented as follows. These are the two blocks with open loop transfer function G1 of S and G2 of S. This is the input R of S and the sampled input R of S. This is the output Y of S and the sampled output Y star of S. The transfer function of the system or the output of the system can be written as y asterisk, which is a sampled function of the output, y of z will be equal to the z transform of d1, d2 of s multiplied by r of z, which can be written as y of z is equals to d1 d2 of z multiplied by r of z from which our y of z over r of z will be equal to g1 d2 of z in other words we multiply out g1 and g2 and then we proceed to determine the z transform of the product to obtain our open loop transfer function. The second scenario is when you have a sampler in between the blocks, with a sampler in between the blocks. So this would be the block diagram representation of such a system. We have the first block, a sampler in between the block, and then a sampler at the output. This is G1 of S, G2 of S. This is 
So these are our samplers, and the assumption is that all the samplers have the same sampling rate. This is our input and our sampled output, the output of the system. And this is the sampled input of the system. From this, our y of z is given as the z transform of g1 of s multiplied by the z transform of g2 of s because each of them has there is a sampler in between the blocks that means each of them is sampled separately multiplied by r of z from which our y of z over r of z will be g1 of z multiplied by g2 of z and that is the open loop transfer function of our given system number two for the closed loop system for the closed loop system again we can have two different forms of block diagrams one where there is a sampler at the output and two where there is no sampler before the output so the first condition is when there is no output sampler with no output sampler the closed loop transfer or the closed loop block diagram representation of the system would be as follows This is our y of s, open loop transfer function g of s, a sampler, our input r of s, and the feedback h of s. The closed loop transfer function y of z over r of z will be obtained as g of z divided by one plus Because there is no sampler between G of S and H of S, then we multiply the two as G H of Z. This becomes the closed loop transfer function of the system when there is no output sampler. Lastly is a situation where we have output sampler with output sampler so the system will look different So these are our samplers. You can notice before we feed back, we have this sampler, which is the significant difference between this system and the first one we had before. And in this case, because there is a sampler in between the blocks, then our closed loop transfer function of the system will be obtained as y of z over r of z will be equal to g of z over one plus then the two of them independently into transfer into z transform as g of z h of z 
and that is the closed loop transfer function given an output sampler. We can take an example of a system and proceed to evaluate certain aspects of that system. We are given a digital control system represented in block diagram as follows. Okay, this is our sampler. And we are told that the controller gain, the controller gain K is unity. <clears throat> and the sampling time T is 0 0.5 seconds. This is our digital control system with a proportional controller K, where K is equals to one our sampler T is 0 0.5 second. This portion is what we call the zero order hold. And this is the plant or the systems open loop transfer function, one over S into S plus two. From this, for the blocks in cascade, we can obtain we can obtain the transfer function G of S as the product of the three, which is K into one minus exponential negative T S over S multiplied by one over S into S plus two. And we are supposed to determine, we're supposed to determine the open loop pulse transfer function the open loop pulse transfer function. Number two, we determine the closed loop pulse transfer function. And lastly, we determine the difference equation. We determine the difference equation for the given system. Our open loop transfer function we can proceed and determine this to be equal to k, but because k is one, we can write this as follows. Because k is one, our open loop transfer function can be written as one minus exponential negative ts multiplied by one over s squared into s plus two. We can obtain the partial fraction form of the second part of the open loop transfer function as follows. One over S squared into S plus two can be written as A over S plus B over S squared plus C over S plus two. If you evaluate the constants A, B, and C, A will be equal to 0 0.5 negative, B is 0 0.5, and C is 0 0.25. That means you can proceed and write our transfer function as negative 0 0.25 over S, plus 0 0.5 over S squared plus 0 0.25 over S plus two. 
the open loop transfer function can now be written as g of s to be equal to one minus exponential negative t s multiplied by 0 0.25 over s negative plus 0 0.5 over s squared plus 0 0.25 over s plus two which you can also write as one minus exponential negative t s then we factor out 0 0.25 0 0.25 into negative one over s plus two over s squared plus one over s plus two then we obtain g of s g of z g of z which is the z transform of g of s as follows so it will be 0 0.25 into then this part the zero order hold one minus exponential negative t s it's transfer function or z trans z transform is given by one minus z power minus one one over s and this can be obtained from the z transform tables so one over s is this part one over s squared number five and one over s plus two compares to number four so we are making use of these functions and go back to our presentation so one over z maps to one over one minus z power minus one. One over s squared maps to t z inverse over one minus z minus one squared and one over s plus a this maps to one over one minus exponential a t negative z power minus one okay so with these transformations then we can write our z transform as follows this will be one minus z power minus one for the zero order hold multiplied by negative z over z minus one plus two t z over z minus one squared plus z over z minus exponential negative 2t. But our t is 0 0.5. It means we can proceed and write this as 0 0.25 into z minus 1 over z, this part, multiplied by negative z over z minus 1 plus z over z minus one squared plus z over z power minus exponential negative one.
which is the same as 0 0.25 into z power minus one over z into negative z over z minus one plus z over z minus one squared plus z over z minus 0 0.368 exponential negative one is 0 0.368. Which upon expansion, our z g of z will be equal to 0 0.092 z plus 0 0.066 divided by z squared minus 1.368 z plus 0 0.368. And that is the open loop transfer function of our system. Number two, we determine the closed loop pulse transfer function given by y of z over r of z is g of z over one plus g h of z. But we notice that our h of s is equals to one, this being a unity feedback system. And therefore we can write our transfer function as g of z over one plus g of z, which will be equal to, so our g of z is transfer function. So the numerator will be 0 0.092z plus 0 0.066 divided by, then we'll have S squared minus, so we have this term 1.368z, we add 0 0.092 to get 1.276z and then plus the constant, will be this constant plus this constant, which will give us 0 0.434. And that is the closed loop pulse transfer function of the system. This closed loop pulse transfer function can also be written as y of z over r of z, which is equals to 0 0.092z plus 0 0.066 divided by z squared minus 1.276z plus 0 0.434. If you divide both the numerator and denominator by z squared, we can write this as 0 0.092z power minus one plus 0 0.066z power minus two over one minus 1.276z power minus one plus 0.434z power minus two. If we multiply out or we cross multiply, we can write y of z into one minus 1.276z per minus one plus 0.434z per minus two will be equal to r of z into 0.092z per minus one plus 0 0.66, 0 0.66z power minus two. From which we can obtain our function in discrete form as y of k into one, We can open the transfer function as follows. Our y of k 
minus 1.276 y of k minus 1 plus 0 0.434 y of k minus 2 y of k minus 2 will be equal to, this will give us 0 0.092 r of k minus 1 plus 0 0.066 r of k minus 2. And this is the difference equation that relates the input and output of our given system. That is the end of my presentation on the pulse transfer function, considering the open loop pulse transfer function with blocks in cascade and a sampler in between the blocks and no sampler between the blocks. And the closed loop transfer function or pulse transfer function of a discrete system with an output sampler and with no output sampler. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video.